everyone. Welcome to another August in the cul-de-sac. I'm Elizabeth Stinson, the cul-de-sac woman. Today, we are breaking things down to simple, basic ingredients based on what Bill's Garden and our CSA share has to offer this week. We're talking farm to table. It sounds so obvious, farm to table. Well, it is simply just as it sounds, harvest through to consumption. The term farm to table was coined fairly recently in comparison to a movement that actually began years ago, promoting the whole idea of fresh locally grown ingredients. So farm to table has come more completely to mean responsible, sustainable agriculture and the utilization of fresh, locally grown, seasonal and often organic ingredients. The term has helped to further increase this awareness as well as to popularize it with consumers. Let's venture into the kitchen and I'll share with you one of my favorite farm to table preparations. Welcome back to my kitchen. As a mom, chef, and food scientist, here's what I personally like about the farm to table way of life. It raises an appreciation and interest as to where our food comes from and how it is produced. And the sense of community that comes with it. All the local farmers markets popping up in every town. I love milling around ours, connecting with friends and neighbors. It also encourages us to consume a wider variety of fruits and vegetables, or just in general. And my absolute favorite, it really inspires us to head into our kitchens to prepare our own simple, delicious, real food. Minimal, simple preparations, preserving the quality, the taste, and the goodness of the food. Let's see, what do we have here? A zucchini, Ooh, an Asian eggplant, an onion, yellow summer squash, a green bell pepper, some beautiful orange peppers, and oodles of tomatoes. This is a wonderful combination of vegetables, all the colors of the rainbow. Now, I'm going to rough chop everything, add it to my large roasting pan here. No measuring, all are welcome. Any combination of vegetables works well, or just straight tomatoes with a little onion and garlic for a simple tomato sauce. I'll be right back with you. Done. Now, just make sure your pan is large enough for the amount of vegetables. I did decide to go up a pan size, but either way, we'll make it work. Moving on, we're going to take advantage of the wonderful sweet and savory flavors that come with roasting by preparing a delicious one-pan, multi-purpose, oven-roasted garden tomato vegetable sauce. Also, the phytonutrient lycopene naturally occurring in the tomatoes that is responsible for their red color and protective antioxidant activity is more concentrated and better absorbed by our bodies when cooked. We need a generous drizzle of canola oil for roasting which also further aids our absorption. Salt and pepper. Each beautiful color here represents a phytonutrient that acts as an antioxidant in our bodies, giving our natural oxidative cell damage defense mechanism a boost, hence antioxidant. And as we've all heard by now, eat your colors. This is pure natural goodness coming at us from all angles. Win, 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 win. Real quick. I also want to mention that we have a few heirloom tomatoes here, non-hybrids, not used in modern large-scale agriculture, meaning that the seeds have been handed down through the generations, maintaining their delicious, old-time, homegrown tomato flavor. I certainly remember my family's homegrown tomatoes as a kid. Red, ripe, delicious, like no other. I can still taste them. Now I'm going to place our beautiful vegetable medley in a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven. This is a slow, low heat roast. 
while covered with foil for 30 minutes. Then I'll remove the foil cover, give it a stir, and then continue cooking it at the 375 degree temperature uncovered while stirring about every 20 minutes or so until it's just about halfway cooked down, sweet, saucy, and savory. You'll see. In the meantime, we'll prepare our garlic herb flavor concentrate that we'll finish our sauce with when it's done cooking. I have a small bowl with about two tablespoons of sour cream, just enough to combine everything all together. I'm going to add about three cloves of fresh grated garlic. And let's see, what did Bill leave out for us this morning? It looks like rosemary and some parsley. Wonderful. I'll break up some of this and add it to our flavors. Now we will be able to easily stir in and distribute our garlic and herbs throughout the cooked sauce without any clumping. We'll just set that aside. Okay, our first 30 minutes of cook time are up. I'll remove the cover, give it a stir. It's getting there. Now I'll return it back to our 375 degree oven uncovered while stirring about every 20 minutes or so until it's done. I'll let you know. Here it is, our multi-purpose oven roasted garden tomato vegetable sauce. Five cycles of 20 minute stirrings uncovered at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Following those first 30 minutes covered at 375. We had a lot of luscious, juicy tomatoes in this one. And you want it cooked down to a sweet, roasted, thick and savory, ragu, if you will, cooking base. I generally do not puree or strain, just a gentle mashing and stirring with my potato masher. This is hearty, wholesome farm to table here with, as you're about to see, endless uses. But first, we need to add that garlic herb flavor concentrate we made. Stirs in smoothly. Fully, fully flavored. This offers the best of cacciatore, provencal, ratatouille, and baba ganoush, all in one. All right, what can we do with our multi-purpose oven roasted garden tomato vegetable sauce? Or it's more like what can't we do with it? It's wonderful over seafood, baked over fish, this is haddock, or drizzled over a nice fresh plate of steamed clams or mussels. You can also dress your pasta with it. And of course, you can also bake it with chicken for a cacciatore, parmesan type of dish. It's also delicious with eggs like I have here, baked eggs. Just break a few eggs over some of the sauce in a baking dish, sprinkle with some Parmesan, and bake it in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 30 minutes until the whites are opaque and the yolks are set. You can also slightly break the yolks before baking if you prefer a little more of a firm egg. You can also add it to your grilled cheese sandwiches or we can use it for crostini appetizers on lightly toasted French bread rounds. It can also be a dipping sauce. I have a breaded chicken strip here and I've also used it as a pizza sauce. Here's the one thing I did puree some of it for. A delicious, wholesome, roasted summer vegetable soup. I pureed it in my food processor with just enough stock, vegetable or chicken, to desired consistency, not too thin. Puree first, then judge how much stock to add. It can be served hot or cold with a dollop of sour cream and a little sprinkling of color. Whatever you have on hand, we have some time from Bill's Garden here. I'm going to enjoy the fish for my dinner. Mm. 
I really love that the fresh herbs peek through all the roasted flavors here. That's delicious homemade farm to table to me. It's perfect with the fish and everything else here. It's a super multi-purpose cooking base to have on hand all week long. Endless uses. In BTW, it even freezes well. I truly enjoyed sharing with you today how I do farm to table. And for more of my cooking ideas, be sure to visit Elizabeth Stinson, Cooking with the Cul-de-Sac Woman at youtube.com. See you next month in the cul-de-sac, everyone.